This video is to explain the uncollectibles or the bad debt expense accounts in accounting. So, have you ever lent money to somebody and then not been paid? This is what happens to companies. So they make a sale on account and then they find out that their customer is not going to pay them. There are two different ways for us to account for this as the company that made the sale on account. So the first method is the direct write-off method. In this method, it's a wait and see approach. They just wait to see which customer is not going to pay them, and then at that time that they determine that they're not going to get paid, they debit bad debt expense and credit the accounts receivable of the customer to write it off. This does not match the bad debt expense into the same period that they made the sale, so it's not in compliance with GAAP, but it is done by many small companies or even companies that don't have a large amount of accounts receivable. All right. The method that does match and that is GAAP compliant is called the allowance method. In this method, at the end of the year, the company will make one adjustment for the estimate of all the accounts that will be uncollectible. At that point in time, they don't know which customer is not going to pay them, but experience tells them that a certain percent will not pay them. So in order to match the bad debt expense into the same period as they made the sales, they make an estimate. All right, there are two different methods to make these estimates. The first one is called percentage of sales. The next way to estimate it is called the analysis of receivables. The accounts and the debits and credits are the same. What changes is how to get to the amount. So at the very end of the year, they're going to debit bad debt expense. And instead of crediting in accounts receivable, since they don't know who it is yet, this is just their estimate, they're going to credit an account called Allowance for Doubtful Accounts. This is an account that is considered like a bucket. They're going to fill it up at the end of the year, and then as they find out who's not going to pay them, they'll just use a little bit of that up. So they'll dump it out each time they determine somebody's not going to pay them. So it's kind of like a safety net. We know we're not going to get paid. Here's an estimate of how much we're not going to get paid, and then each time we don't get paid, we'll take it out of that allowance account. So the percentage of sales method takes sales, credit sales, times the percent, and that is the amount of the estimate. So you will debit bad debt expense and credit allowance for doubtful accounts for that number. Contrast that to the analysis of receivables method. You'll look at the aging report, and you'll determine how much you believe is uncollectible. And then there's another step. You'll look inside the allowance account, and you will make your allowance account be the number that you calculated. So let me show you exactly how this works. All right, at the end of the year, Allowance for Doubtful Accounts has a debit balance of $100. Okay, this means that they have actually written off more than what they expected because this is a negative balance for Allowance for Doubtful Accounts, and that's okay because we're about to fill it back up. All right, percent of sales method estimates that the uncollectible expense for the year is $500. Well, for the percent of sales method, we simply take that estimate and make our journal entry for it, just like that. So we go ahead and do bad debt expense for 500. We do allowance for doubtful accounts for 500. And then if you want to look inside your allowance account, you'll see we only have 400. That's because we already had a debt balance of 100. All right, so let's look and see the next one. However, if the company uses the analysis of the aging accounts receivable method, they also estimate the uncollectible expense to be 500. But look how we put this one in. If we're using the analysis of receivables, the number we calculate is what we want our ending balance to be for allowance for doubtful accounts. So how do I get to 500 if I already have a debit of 100? Well, I need 600 because a credit of 600 minus the debit of 100 will get me to 500. So my journal entry must be for the 600 so that I can get to the balance that I want of 500. So the entry looks like this, bad debt expense, allowance for doubtful accounts. And this third one over here is to show you that if we were doing the bad debt, the direct write-off method, we wouldn't have an estimate because that's the wait and see approach. We don't estimate it up front. All right, so just to go back over this, this method where whatever we calculated was our entry of $500, this method right here is called the allowance method using percent oops, of sales. 
this method where we calculated that we wanted our balance to be 500, okay, so therefore we needed a $600 adjustment, is considered the analysis of receivables method. And this method down here is where we have the wait and see approach. We don't even make an estimate, so it's called the direct write-off method. All right, so the top two methods adhere to the matching principle, and so therefore they are in compliance with GAAP, which is generally accepted accounting principles. This one's the wait and see method. We don't match the expense in the same period as the sales, so therefore it's um, not GAAP. All right, let's look at this last part. During the year, the company received a notice that their customer, Smith, filed for bankruptcy. So now we know who's not going to pay us, or at least one person out of the year. Therefore, his account, $50, is written off. Indicate which of the following is being used. So let's look in here. We are using up some of our allowance, and then we're going to get rid of accounts receivable for Smith. So this method right here would be considered the allowance method. And then let's look at the last one. In this one, we're debiting bad debt expense. So we didn't have an estimate to use up. We just waited. And at the moment we decided Smith wasn't going to pay us, we debited bad debt expense. So this is how you do a write-off, a specific write-off using the direct write-off method. And that is a summary of uncollectible expense for companies.